News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM. We are KFYL Mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin, right here on your radio. And on the phone, as promised, is uh, our Congressman, Jody Arrington. Good morning, Congressman. Dave, Matt, how y'all doing? doing so, well. so far, so good. I guess the question is, how are you doing? Are you in Washington? Listen, I'm doing, if, if I sound a little lighter and more at peace, it's because I'm looking at a West Texas sunrise ah. on my way to post and then down into the big country to Abilene to go to Dias Air Force Base and some other things. So today's going to be a great day, and I'm glad to be with you. Oh, that's great. Well, always good to be back in uh, back home, isn't it? It always is, and um, we've got a full agenda, but I'm um, happy to give an update on, on what's going on in the, in the swamp. Yeah, I mean, the uh, big thing is the, the farm bill right now. I mean, it, I'm still hearing a lot of stuff. You've got the... Uh, the NAFTA deal potentially going through, is is that going to affect the farm deal in any way? Uh, no, but the NAFTA, I think what I'd like to reiterate to folks is the president is once again fulfilling his campaign promises to improve the trade deals that he felt like were negotiated uh, in, in, in weakness instead of strength. I, I would agree that uh, he's made improvements, and we could go through a list of things. Uh, but even with agriculture, we've seen improvements, although we kind of had a do-no-harm policy for ag going into NAFTA. Mexico's settled now. Canada's going to come to the table. They are, they've put big taxes on our dairy products coming in, and that's one of the big sticking points. But uh, that and you got Japan and Europe all working with the United States in a multilateral way to uh, hold China accountable, working with the WTO. We haven't seen this before. But we haven't had a president that was not a politician, yeah. and I'm, I'm very proud of what he's doing. Uh, I support him 100%. I, I just saw a headline, uh, so don't quote me on this, but it said China has uh, lifted some tariffs. Now, this was a headline, I guess, last night that I was reading. I don't know if, if that's... Well, well I, I, I know that Europe is talking about zero subsidies. That's a huge thing. China's going to have to change their behavior uh, because... Uh, we're not going to blink because we have a president that won't blink and because they need our market with $500 billion worth of goods provided to the U.S. versus right. our $100 billion. So right. I, I'm, I don't know what they're, where they are today, but they, they, they've really just done uh, made offers that are window dressing and not very substantive up to now. But I just before long, they're going to have to change their behavior, and I think it's going to go well for, for, for all of us, even the ag guys, who are experiencing a little fallout, to your point, Matt. Uh, but they're going to be much better off when we hit reset with China. Uh, you know, I was, I've been amazed watching the media just whine and cry about uh, Trump is p- perhaps going to destroy America with these uh, these these massive tariffs and saying blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, he arguably is one of the best negotiators in the world. And I, I'm going to take his side every time. And he, he, he continues to seem to just win and win and win and win. And the, the press is still not giving him a, a shake, a fair shake on it, are they? Listen, Dave, we were out of the Chinese market, which is the largest market in the world, a billion people. And uh, our U.S. beef was prevented from going to that market for 14 years. And in a meeting with the president of China, he opened that market. Same thing, but even longer, with pork to Argentina. They said he couldn't make NAFTA work. He couldn't improve it, improve it whether it's food safety, labor, or caught, or, or a country of origin, dispute resolution, I can go down the list. That is a better deal for American workers and our economy and our manufacturers uh, mainly. So, yeah, he's doing, he's doing a great job, but he'll never get a pass uh, from this mainstream media, and that's okay. We've got to take this message to the people in our districts, and that's what I'm doing when I'm out here every day. Yep. Okay, Congressman, is is Canada still demanding uh, the social side of the NAFTA agreement? I mean, the global warming, the um, other things, uh, women's rights, and all that that stuff with their NAFTA agreement. Well, I, that that's been a topic of discussion, um, but that is not the sticking point. Um, there really is. The, the dairy industry is a huge, they have huge barriers to our guys coming into their markets when ours are wide, our markets are wide open. So that's, I don't think it's the social issues, the environmental issues 
that are the sticking points. I think they're willing to move on those. It's this, it's the protectionist policies for their uh, dairy farmers that uh, that's one, but that's one of the bigger ones, and the president mentions that a lot okay. uh, when he's talking about it. The Congre- and- Congressman, we've seen uh, uh, Barack Obama back on the campaign trail, and I heard uh, talk. one of the talking heads, I thought, said something that was pretty – accurate he said this is just seeing him back on tv uh blabbing again just reminds people why they voted for donald trump what are your thoughts about <laughs> about this well i think that is uh, the reason w- that a big reason people went to the polls and were so energized to put donald trump and a republican majority in because uh obamanomics was a failure uh obamacare was an abject failure government controlled socialized anything Central planning like they have in the Soviet Union fails in Venezuela, fails in Cuba, North Korea. The list is pretty long. And uh, we want an American economy. We want free enterprise. And we don't want big government solutions. And a one size fits all to all of our problems. That's what Obama represented. I mean, I, I don't have to get personal with him. He was our president. Um, I'm sure he's a good guy. I think he's a good family man. I respect that. His policies were horrible for this country. So, yeah, I agree with whoever said that. It's just a reminder of the, the, the president that's going to put the policies in place, and in fact has, that has grown our economy, restored our security and uh, opportunities uh, with 7 million surplus jobs. Yeah, Congressman, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, uh, you can kind of tell us what's, if there's anything new with the farm bill. You got it. All right, thanks, Congressman. News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM. KFYL Mornings, Dave King, Matt Martin here on your radio. And on the phone with us uh, this morning is uh, our Congressman Jody Arrington. Yeah, Congressman, um, how are things going as far as the conference uh, with the Farm Bill? Well, we're, the Democrats and the Senate have their heels dug in on not reforming the food stamp program, as we've talked about before on the show. That represents... 85% of the farm bill, it's $70 billion, and you've got millions of people, able-bodied, work-capable adults who are receiving food stamps but not working. And we have an economy, as we talked about, that has millions, almost 7 million surplus jobs. And uh, I know the intentions were good when they created these uh, big welfare programs, but they haven't moved the needle since the 1960s on poverty rate, we've just spent $22 trillion, and we've done nothing. The poverty rate's the same today as it was in the 60s. We spend 16 times more today than we did then, and the, the best anti-poverty strategy is still a job, and that's what these free market policies are doing uh, now that we've got them in place after Obamanomics. And uh, so we've got to push hard on this because it's, it's important to reform the welfare, not just the welfare programs but the welfare mentality we've got it's not good to trap people in that cycle of poverty and dependence on government well and and on i mean just to bring this up uh, as far as the problems with social security and other things that that are out there if people aren't working those things aren't aren't getting funding that's a good that's a good point i talk about social security and the uh it's it's not on a sustainable path it's going to be insolvent in the, about 10 years the social security fund trust fund and you're right. I mean, part of it's getting the economy growing, but the other is getting people off the sidelines and working and paying taxes. So uh, good good point there. But it's just not right to do. And we've got generations of people that have a, a mentality that is, uh, that is not going to be good for them. It's not good for their family, and it's not good for our economy. So I, I hope we can get those. The president's pushing for them. Mike Conway, our chairman, is. That's the big sticking point. So there. is SNAP the only problem that they're running into? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there are other little things. I mean, I'm pushing for uh, – t- the Senate has a phase-out of a program that supports the textile industry where we spin cotton into a product. And, um, you know, China will put us out of the textile uh, business just like they would put us out of the strategic metal manufacturing uh, operation if we don't have something to neutralize and to make a more even playing field. So I'm, I'm pushing to make sure we can continue to have programs that level the playing field for, for, for the cotton industry uh, more broadly. So that, those are, there's some little things like that, but I think we'll prevail. What, I, what I'm worried about, though, is, is, is having a farm bill that's good for farmers and good for the ag economy, but, but 
may not be good for the entire economy because of a lack of reforms on the food stamp. Okay, side. so uh, the president has actually stated that if there's no reform to SNAP as far as uh, work requirements, that he's not going to sign it, right? Well, that's, that's, he's kind of dialed it back a little bit. I mean, I like when he says that because we put pressure on the Senate, and there's some Senate Democrats and, and conservative uh, states that Trump actually won. And I think if we just put a little pressure on them, I think we can get them to get a deal that includes uh, food stamp reforms. Hmm. Interesting. Well, uh, we have a texture this morning that says, uh, ask the congressman why repealing Obamacare is nowhere in the Republican platform. Is McCain's antics the end of the story? Great question. Um, we did repeal the individual mandate, uh, so government can't coerce you to isn't buy. That, isn't that the death knell, really, when you repeal the mandate? Well, it, it's sort of. Um, it's a big part of it, but we still have the our businesses are, are really suffering under the what I think is still the biggest tax, and that's Obamacare and the mandate for them to provide uh, government uh, mandated insurance. So no, there's a lot of deregulation to do. Um, and there's still taxes within Obamacare, um, and there were still major cuts, about $800 billion over 10 years to Medicare. Uh, so, no, there's a lot of unwinding to do. Listen, I think we're going to gain seats in the Senate. If we hold on to the majority in the House, we'll take another run at the full repeal of Obamacare and reform of our health care system with market-based reforms. But only if we keep the House can we do that. But, yeah, I'm disappointed that we weren't able to get it done. We were one vote away in the Senate. The House did its job. But we'll take another run at it if we keep the House. But that's going to be the most – I mean, it's a tenuous situation right now. Do you think that, that really you can, do, you can uh, make enough changes uh, to reduce costs enough to make it uh, 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 health insurance really affordable for the uh, American public? <laughs> You, you can, and, and even the CBO, which is loath to say anything positive about uh, Republican sort of free market reforms, but absolutely, they said that our reform bill that we sent to the Senate that repealed Obamacare and reformed our health care system would bend the cost curve. And here's how you do it: just like in, just like in any, look at LASIK surgery. Um, it has gone down significantly because of competition and because of choice. And when you create a market, a real market where consumers have a choice and there's real robust competition, that's going to drive costs down and quality up. We've never had a real market in health care. So, yeah, that was the point and the trajectory of our health care reform bill. And we were one vote short of getting it through the Senate. But, yes, you can, you can reduce costs yeah, in health care. Yeah. Well, Congressman, we're coming up on a hard break, and we thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, with us this morning. And look forward to talking to you again in a couple of weeks. Best of luck. Thank you. Always good to be with you. God bless West Texas. All right. Thanks, Congressman. Okay. It is um, coming up around 8 o'clock here on KFYL Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. Uh, 65 degrees out here in the Hub City this morning. Always good to talk to Congressman Arrington. I think, I think he's pretty well liked. We'll be back with more after this.